On behalf of Cuyahoga Valley National Park, I am Lisa Pettit. I am the superintendent of Cuyahoga Valley, and I want to extend a great welcome to all of you. Thanks for being here with us this morning um, for this overview of our community access plan and the invitation of you to uh, participate in our planning process and giving us feedback over time here. Uh, we're going to give you a brief technical overview to begin with in this meeting, and then we'll be introducing the community access plan. We're going to tell you how you can provide comments for us, and then we'll open it up for some questions and answers at the end. The meeting is being recorded for us today, and it's going to be remaining available for your viewing um, at the same link that you're using to join us today. Today is really just an introduction and telling you how you can provide comments and participate. It will not be an in-depth uh, feedback session. So with that, I will turn it back over to Jenny, Jenny Vassarelli. And I'm turning it over to Denver Service Center to get us started. Yeah, thanks so much, Jenny. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Maureen Finnerty. I'm a planner with the Denver Service Center, uh, which is a, um, a planning, planning branch of the National Park Service. Um, just want to give you a quick introduction to our technology today, make sure everyone's able to fully participate in the meeting. So if you are unfamiliar with Teams or if you haven't used it in a while, just point out a couple of features in the upper right hand corner of your screen for those of you that are able to join us on Teams. Um, just these, there's a few buttons I want to point out. So if you want to see who's joining us, that's the, there's a photo, there's a, an image of two people. If you click on that, you'll be able to see the participant list. The next one, this is one of the most important ones. This is the chat feature. It looks like a, 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 a voice bubble. Uh, if you click on that, you'll be able to access the chat for the meeting. You'll also be able, that will open a window where you'll be able to, to type a chat to us. If for some reason, um, we do encourage you to use the chat throughout the, the meeting. We'll be monitoring that for questions, for comments. Um, it's a great way to get in touch with the, with the facilitators and the planners. Uh, if for some reason you cannot see the chat, just head up to the top of your screen and, and click that chat button. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that disappears for you. Um, the other, the other button are there's there's three dots next to that. That gives you that gives you additional controls. I'll explain what all those do in a moment. Uh, if you, uh, we'd love to see your faces today while we're on the call, especially during the question and answer session. If you're comfortable, turn in your video on. That button that is shaped like a video camera will be the the tool you use to do that. And uh, but if you are having bandwidth issues or you prefer not to be on camera, you can use that same button to turn it off. Uh, the one next to it is the, the shaped one shaped like a microphone. That is your audio control button. So um, wherever you're taking this meeting from, we are going to ask you to stay uh, stay muted during the presentation. Uh, but please uh, unmute yourself if you have a question or you want to you want to jump into the conversation. Uh, we may be managing the mute during the call. I know um, certainly I have had issues where I have not been on mute and had a had a tiny coworker behind me or a dog barking. So if you if you see us mute you, it is not personal. We are just trying to manage the background noise on today's call. Uh, next slide. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so a couple of just uh, what happens when you click these buttons. Uh, if you click that chat button, you'll see it'll open up a, a chat window like the one on the screen where it says type new message here. Um, and then the only other one I really want to point out to y'all is that when I, I mentioned those three dots at the top that says more, uh, two features that you may want to pay attention to. One is if you do want to be on camera and you don't want us to see what's going on behind you, you can use the apply background effect. Uh, key that'll allow you to blur the background or there's some stock backgrounds on teams you can use. Um, the other one is if you are having audio issues or video issues, any kind of bandwidth, you can use the turn off incoming video feature. You will still be able to see the presentation, but it'll turn off any extraneous video that might be causing your bandwidth to be diminished in any way. Next slide. All right, if you need captioning for today's meeting, captioning is being provided by uh, Burnbaum Interpretive Interpreting Services. Um, I believe Marsha is our captioner today. And 
that information is is on the screen and we will be dropping that link into the chat. The other thing to be aware of is if you have any issues with your teams not working, you can mute yourself and you can use our audio call-in. So that is available on the screen and we'll, we'll get those numbers into the chat for you as well. And thank you, Tessa. Tessa just dropped our, our captioning link and our call-in numbers into the chat. I'll pass it over to Pam. Great, thanks Maureen. Um, hi everybody, I'm Pam. Um, just a, a quick little overview um, in addition to what Lisa uh, gave you. We're going to start with a, a park introduction. It's always a good place to start just to get some context, a little bit of background information. And we'll give you a little, a little taste of the planning process and an introduction to part of the planning, um, the, the zoning that we, the zoning work we did in the park. We're going to give you an overview of the management actions that are in the park or in the plan, sorry, this is by no means a, an exhaustive list of all the actions, but it's to kind of just whet your appetite and um, hopefully encourage you to take a closer look at the plan. And then we'll finally end with what is your critical role in all of this and why we are so happy that you are on this call today. Um, I just want to give a quick introduction to everybody who is a presenter on this call. So I'm Pam Barnes. I obviously work for the National Park. Um, we have Jenny Vassarelli, who also works for the park, and we have Ivan Kasovic, who works for the park. And we have two friends from Denver Service Center who have made the trek from Denver to Ohio um, to join us for this week of uh, meetings. We have Maureen Finnerty and Tessa Buono. So thanks, Maureen and Tessa, for being here. I'm going to now turn it over to Ivan for the park intro. Thank you, Pam. Great to see everybody this morning, especially some familiar and friendly faces. So I'm going to just take a minute or two to buzz through a couple slides to just set the context for folks that might not be as familiar with the park. So uh, here we are uh, in the middle of the distance between Cleveland and Akron. And if we all talk about the Cleveland Metro Parks as being an emerald necklace, we are the 33,000 acre emerald pendant hanging off of that necklace between the two cities. Within that 33,000 acres, you know, we only own about 19,000 of those. Um, the balance is made up of Metro Parks reservations, both Summit and Cleveland, as well as things like the Ski Hills and the uh, Blossom Music Center and also private property. So not exactly a bubble, not a square park out west um, within which we are all uh, in exclusive jurisdiction. We do our work here in concert with others, many others. So that's by design because Congress told us in 1974, that's right, almost 50 years ago, the clock is ticking towards our birthday here, that our purpose was to do exactly, um, exactly this, which is to preserve and protect for public use uh, and enjoyment this valley they called out the river and the river valley specifically and to provide for education and recreation opportunities for the urban populations. Pretty much exactly what other uh, national parks in the parks to the people program were intended to do. And we feel that we've done a bunch of it, but we're by no means done. This plan takes us to the next level. There are a couple of other documents or planning efforts that we've done already that guide this. Uh, one we went through just a few years ago was identifying, well, what are the fundamental resources and values of this place? Like, we've got to narrow things down. Money is extraordinarily tight. What do we need to focus on? What's fundamental to this place? And that's what's on this list here, some of the things that we identified. Everything from the, you know, unbroken forest tracks of Virginia Kendall, which are super important uh, ecologically to the area, to the Valley Railway, CVSR, and uh, unfinished work there, as well as some of the things that we do, like the way that we manage, uh, the values that we share in this park over administrations, which are um, place-based education, you know, the, the environmental ed center, residential environmental education, very important to us, fundamental as a matter of fact, as well as the way we do community engagement, uh, just what we're doing today. The next doc that really, um, that really guides us is the park significance um, work that we've already done, which is to say, all right, well, what's OK, that's great. But what's really sets us apart um, from our peers? Um, what's nationally significant about this place? 
and, and some of the things I would just point out here is uh, that something very special about our situation is the restoration work that we do here. And that is uh, you know, fundamental to what we do uh, every day to transform Cuyahoga Valley National Park from what we received in 1974 uh, to where we need to be in the next 50 years, which is a restored landscape. And also to call out the cultural and the natural re uh, resources and to make them available uh, to the people that we serve, which is you all. And uh, yeah, so that's what got us here. And I'm gonna pass it back uh, so you can take a look at how we put together this plan and uh, how it's gonna get us to where we need to be. Great, thank you, Ivan. So um, why are we doing this work? This project started a few years ago where we both looked internally at issues that we were facing and what we wanted to achieve around visitation and our relationship to communities. And we also did a really significant effort to reach out to um, communities and stakeholders in the public in March 2021. And that all really informed what we were trying to achieve with this plan. So through this plan, we're trying to adapt to changing park visitation. We're trying to ensure that the access we provide is inclusive and equitable at the same time that it's not overly um, causing congestion <clears throat> and conflicts between different types of user groups. We wanna think about our wayfinding. We want to ensure that we maintain really high quality natural and historical resources as part of what visitors experience. And we wanted to plan for some specific uses of the park, particularly how people access the Cuyahoga River for paddling and um, camping. We are using a specific planning uh, process. It is called the Interagency Visitor Use Management Framework. It's a framework developed um, and implemented um, by a number of federal land management agencies. In addition to doing the planning, um, it involves a monitoring program where we can um, do ongoing monitoring of visitation and resource conditions so that we can continue to adapt our work across time. Again, we started with this um, detailed, robust community engagement process in March 2021. We received over a thousand substantive comments. If you are one of those commenters, thank you very much. Um, it was incredibly helpful to us. We have now drafted the plan and um, where we are now is not in a brainstorming phase, but really an opportunity to respond to the plan make sure we got it right, make sure that we're considering, you know, kind of all the different things and perspectives we need to consider as we move to finalize the plan and do um, implementation. So your experience visiting the park, your particular interests, it's really important for us to hear those as we finalize the plan. Um, this is a 60 day comment period. It started yesterday. So you have until September 16th to comment. Once the comment period is done, we'll review the plans um, or review the comments. We won't be able to accept all the comments, but we will definitely give every comment um, you know, fair consideration. We'll finalize the plan and then we'll move into an environmental analysis process to make sure that implementing the plan um, will not have inappropriate um, impacts on the environment of the park. So that is where, where we are and what's coming up next. And I'm also going to talk about um, one of the elements of the plan, which is zoning. So zoning is how we divide the park into geographic areas that are useful for making ongoing management decisions. So we divide the park into geographic areas and we also describe what we're trying to achieve in those areas. So in some ways, this is the vision for <clears throat> what the park will be like in the future. This part of the plan 
is um, an update to our 1977 general management plan. We've identified four zones. Our zones are not contiguous um, due to the nature of the park. So the high value experience zone includes the most visited areas of the park. Those areas also tend to have very high quality natural and cultural resources. So um, our management of those zones is very much about how do we support high uh, visitation while protecting resources. The natural zone, um, these are less visited area of the parks, a sense of nature dominates them. You know, we're focusing on maintaining biological and ecological integrity. We do keep an eye on cultural landscapes that reflect the history of the valley. Visitors to natural zones really have the opportunity to experience natural sights, sounds, and ecological processes. The Cuyahoga River Corridor Zone is this really uh, multi-use zone that includes experiences on and adjacent to the river that focus on scenery, nature, cultural values, and recreational experiences, including multimodal recreational experiences where people you know, are shifting between a railroad, um, the towpath trail, and the river itself. And then um, our last zone is the sensitive zone. The, this zone focuses on providing the highest level of protection with areas with a high concentration of sensitive natural resources. We're using this zoning to make decisions on places where we're not looking to introduce a lot of new visitor use. So that's a, a really important zone type for future decision making. And with that, I am going to turn it back to Pam to start talking about management actions. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so also within those zones, um, we've identified um, desired conditions, uh, what kind of conditions we want to achieve in each of those zones. And, and that's what we do through these management actions. So the goal of this presentation is to just orient you to the type of information that's in the plan um, and to give you the, the broad general direction. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see um, those bullet points describing that management direction. Um, it's, it's about how do we provide really high quality experiences while at the same time protecting park resources. It's that dual mission of the National Park Service um, that it kind of on the surface sounds like those two aspects of the mission are in conflict with each other, uh, but it's something that we always have to keep in mind. We want people to have really high quality opportunities for recreation that matches your skill, um, interests and abilities, um, and focusing on accessibility. Um, but we also want to make sure that the integrity of the resource is kept intact, um, that we are also not only keeping things intact, but we're restoring and improving the, the status. And finally, that we're looking at how our facilities are in harmony with the landscape and that they are welcoming and inviting. So on the next slide, um, you'll see categories for um, these, the types of actions that, that are throughout this plan. And so the next few slides that Ivan and I will go through, we'll kind of dive into each one of these in a little bit more detail. And, and so that's one way of organizing our major strategies. And the, the other way that they're organized is geographically. So I'm not expecting you to be able to see this map. Um, this map does exist in the plan, um, so you can dive in and take a closer look at it. So I, I think it's helpful to, to look at the fact that we organize these actions two different ways. And then uh, over the next few slides, um, we are going to review what those actions are. And I'm going to let Ivan uh, take you through take you through the first few. Thanks, Pam. So uh, let me just show you real quickly uh, a few that you find in the plan that you want to jump to if this is your area of uh, interest. Uh, let's talk about access and congestion. If you come down to the park or up to the park on the weekend, of course, you know that parking and congestion is an issue for us, and that's uh, what we're addressing in this section. 
Uh, what do we do about the concentrated use? How do we spread it out? Where should we um, direct visitation so that we can um, alleviate some of those pressures, particularly because they tend to spill over onto our neighbors? So um, let's take a look at a few of those specifically. The first one is, um, so wayfinding and, con and congestion is a big one. River access is another. Uh, so paddling, of course, has just uh, very just exploded in the last few years. And uh, what we've done is we've taken a pretty careful look at where we had already uh, developed, uh, you know, people had developed uh, put-ins and takeouts, what we call landings, along our 20 plus miles of the Cuyahoga River water trail. And then sort of did an analysis of how could we sort of arrange these put-ins and takeouts to maximize the advantages we have of using the train and the towpath to move both people and boats, um, particularly when we look at, you know, reducing the amount of cars parked in parking lots all day. If you can take the train to your put in, you know, you, you just reduced by 50% um, your impact on congestion. So there's a matrix where you can look at the um, sites that we've identified and, you know, how much parking would be there? Do we need to add, do we need to subtract? Will these be ADA accessible? Where are we putting bathrooms? Where do we have train access and what are the connections? So if you are interested in paddling, you know, this is a part of the plan where you would want to go to and look, does this make sense to you? Um, is there something that we haven't looked at that you would encourage us to consider? Or are there just some um, some lousy ideas in here that we need to we need to look at again and make suggestions about how we can improve? So um, a good section for paddlers to jump into and have a look at what we are thinking in terms of moving people and boats and um, and managing this section of the Cuyahoga River Water Trail. Um, so that's one. The next I want to point out is parking. You know, we talked briefly about some of the issues that we've got. So basically three things we're looking at. Uh, we're, in some places, we're looking at expansion of parking because it just makes sense. Uh, we'll never be able to meet the peak flow at Brandywine Falls, but we do think we need to do something to improve um, the conditions for the people that live out there. Other places where we think we can maybe reduce parking, uh, you know, traditionally lots stand empty even in the busiest times at a couple of our uh, quick road access points. And then the other one is, um, you know, what can we do to improve or make changes to existing uh, lots, uh, short-term parking, um, better management of uh, RVs and so forth. So that's uh, another one where if you're interested in um, in that issue, you can jump right to that in the plan. And the, the last one I want to identify before I hand it back to Pam is um, kind of a broad subject that we call wayfinding circulation and information. When I first came to Cuyahoga Valley National Park in the 90s, um, we, we made the first trip down here. We were visiting from uh, Colorado or Arizona, and um, we said, well, let's go down and take a look at this national park. We couldn't, we couldn't find it. We were actually driving back and forth across it. We just didn't know it. So how can we make the, the entry experience better for the first time visitors who are a bigger part of our, of our visitation every year? And then also, how can we make it easier to find your way from one spot to another? You know, if we're redirecting people from the high impact areas uh, to lower impact areas, it should be easy for those folks to find. And then um, the other big part of wayfinding and circulation is uh, the trail network. It's not just the road network, but also the trail network. Looking at the trail signage and direction on our network, but also how that interfaces with um, county and also Metro Parks uh, signage so that we can make connections to the trail networks all around us easier for people to find and to navigate. So those are some of the ideas that we've identified in the um, in the plan that uh, we are asking you to jump into and take a look at some of these actions and give us some feedback, uh, particularly if you think we've we've missed something. And of course, a lot of this has to do with uh, with working with the local uh, governments that we um, that we interface with because uh, the road system in the national park is is not ours, but it's uh, it, it's uh, with the municipalities, the counties and the state. So working in partnership with those folks is important as well. And uh, I think it's back to you, Pam. Yeah, I think so. Thanks, Ivan. 
So um, next on our list is um, experience and protection of cultural resources. Um, we have about 600 historic structures and archaeological sites in the park that we are protecting. Um, and probably the most significant cultural resource is, of course, the Ohio and Erie Canal. A couple of actions related to that um, that I wanted to draw to your attention is there is an action in the plan to pave the towpath trail, changing it from that crushed limestone to a chip sealed asphalt service surface. Uh, so we'd like to hear your thoughts on that action. Um, also, we're looking at how well you can see and experience the Ohio and Erie Canal. So looking at the overall visibility and the, some of that has to do with vegetation management. Um, we are also looking at telling better the story of agriculture through a countryside center and um, strengthening our, our relationships and um, how we tell stories um, with the uh, Native Americans that were here in the valley and still are. So next we have um, not only cultural resources, but some really rich natural resources. Um, we've got, it's, it's almost like this little island um, because of our location, we have some really incredible um, diversity, um, but also that diversity is threatened um, by um, the very people that want to come and enjoy it. So um, those are, that's where we need to help um, balance the, that dueling mission of protect the resource and make it available for people. So one of the things we're looking at in protecting resource is is uh, trails. So you have developed trails and then you have visitor created trails or we call them uh, social trails. In the plan, we have um, some actions to either formalize, make those um, visitor created trails into um, official trails or to take those areas and naturalize them and try to protect the natural resources. Um, so you'll see some other actions to do with trails. One other that I want to draw your attention to is a, a plan to look at whether we can close trails when it's wet. And we know what happens uh, when trails are super wet is people walk around the wet areas and that results in the trail becoming wider and wider and wider, and that affects the natural resources. And lastly, we've been looking at some data as far as wildlife crossings and uh, mortality rates with amphibians on the roads. Um, and so that involves some partnership with our local communities as well. So speaking of relationships with communities, we have uh, 15 mu municipalities that this park is kind of intertwined with. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities to partner with each one of these communities, um, to look at them each as a gateway into the national park and a, a way for some mutual benefit to um, collaborate in trail planning and um, public transit access and shuttles and um, even extending the Cuyahoga Valley Scenic Railroad um, down into Cleveland. We also heard loud and clear that camping is important to people. Um, that's one of the most common questions that we have um, as far as our future plans. So you'll see some specific camping actions um, as far as hiking in um, along the river and some group camping at Howe Meadow. And lastly, we were um, looking at how do we look at camping in more of a regional way and not just within those uh, 33,000 acres of the park. So we're paying attention to emerging camping opportunities and uh, before we dive straight into park provided um, developed camping. We also are really um, paying attention to equitable and and inclusive experiences. We know from, from looking at data um, on our visitation that visitation to the park um, does not match the demographics of the surrounding communities. And so we're looking at some actions that will uh, boost the, the way that our um, amenities are welcoming to everybody. So um, small scale amenities, some, some examples of that are bike maintenance stations, um, e-bike charging stations, the way that we um, organize picnic tables for larger groups who want to have a picnic, um, accessibility for those with physical disabilities, um, including an ADA accessible route at the ledges is a specific action, and um, 
improving opportunities for of, for people with disabilities um, to have access to some adaptive recreational equipment like um, track chairs and um, things will, that will allow better access to um, every every aspect of the park. And finally, um, we're looking at redesigning that Howe Meadow area so it can better um, house uh, large special events. We know there's some issues with um, just getting into Howe Meadow and getting out of Howe Meadow and the traffic on Riverview Road and a lot of the amenities um, that are that need to be um, added to Howe Meadow. And finally, we are looking at um, how we provide visitor services. There are a lot of opportunities for allowing others besides the National Park Service to provide services like rental equipment, um, guide services, kayak shuttle services. And it's also um, opportunities to bring in um, demographically diverse businesses um, and to have business opportunities within the park. So that was a lot of um, ground that we just covered and um, I'm gonna let that sink in a little bit and I'm gonna turn it back um, to over to Tessa and we're gonna get into the specifics of how you access the plan and how you make comments on it. Great, thank you, Pam. Yeah, so the role that you all have is the most important. We would love your feedback on how we can refine these actions. So first, we're wondering from you, from you all, what are your suggestions to refine these actions? As mentioned earlier, we are in the final stages of this planning process. We are not in the brainstorming phase at this time. So at this stage, we really want specific feedback to help refine these proposed actions. So the more specific information you can provide, the better. If folks have insight or opinions on river access or parking, for example, we would love to hear your feedback on how we can further refine those specific actions. Next, we would love to know what we should be considering to finalize and implement these actions. Um, while implementation is not happening on the ground at this, we would love to hear this input to consider for the future. And last, we would love to hear if you have any other thoughts that you would like to share with the project team. So are there any other specific comments that you think would be valuable for the planning team to consider? We would love to hear input on that. So from now until September 16th, our planning process welcomes comments from you all. And we would love to hear your comments. And there are two main options. So one is first through the project homepage at the link provided here, which is also in the chat. That's the project homepage. And at that site, you'll find information on our public meetings, how to comment on the plan, and opportunities to learn more about the plan through our additional materials. The second way to provide comments is by mailing your hard copy comments to the address shown on the screen, which is the superintendent's office. And if you or a friend are able to attend one of our in-person public meetings this week, we will also have comment cards available to fill out there. So we'll just walk you through how to use this project homepage. So when you go to that website shown, which is also in the chat, it will look like this. And on the left-hand side, it says open for comment with the red circle highlighted. So if you click on that, it will bring you to the next page. From here, you'll click on Cuyahoga Valley National Park Community Access Plan, Summer 2022 Civic Engagement. From there, you'll see the comment now button. So that is how you can provide official comments on this plan. On this page are also our topic questions, which are kind of our guiding questions that will help um, guide your process for providing comments that will be helpful for our planning team to consider. And this page also includes our newsletter, which is in English and Spanish, and the full cap, which is our community access plan linked at the bottom there. We also have a link to our story map and we'll 
add that in the chat as well. The story map is a really great way to learn more about the park and this plan. And this is just a screenshot of what that story map looks like. So when you get there, it will look familiar to you. So at this time, I'll hand it back over to Jenny. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say thank you all for being here. And again, I hope this gave you a nice orientation to the plan. Um, we were highlighting some of the kind of the bigger actions that we thought would have greater public interest um, in this Q&A session that we're about to open. You can ask um, where specific things might be located. I'll also drop my contact information into the chat that way. If you are trying to find something and you can't, um, I can help you find it. It is it is a big document. There is a table of contents to help you navigate it, um, but we want to make sure that you're you're having success um, navigating it. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Maureen so we can do our Q and A. Thank you, Jenny. 